Greetings, my name is Elizabeth Cohen. I'm an assistant professor of communication studies at West Virginia University, and I'm going to be your instructor for this semester of communication campaigns. Um, this is just going to be a brief, I'll tell you all about what I mean by brief, um, I'm not very good at that, uh, brief introduction to the course. Um, I'm just gonna be following down the syllabus, which um, as soon as school starts on Wednesday, um, you are going to be able to access a syllabus. So what you might want to do if you haven't already is print out the syllabus on eCampus um, and you might be able to sort of follow along with me. Um, I'll try to go in order, but kind of the reason I like to do this is just because um, in case as I'm going through the syllabus, I want to emphasize something in particular, or um, maybe I'm like, oh, I should have mentioned this, you know, I'll, I'll kind of add that in as I go through. Um, so there's a chance you might want to take notes, but I don't think this is going to be that intense. Um, anyway, welcome. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Elizabeth Cohen. Um, I actually do research in the media and I um, have a specific um, area of interest in sort of media related um, health communication efforts. Um, that's sort of why I enjoy teaching campaigns. Uh, I'm very much interested in how we can use the media to um, persuade people to better themselves or other people or the environment and things like that. Um, I, I want to warn you of something though, and this will get us um, straight into what you need to be um, concerned with. Um, if I could retitle this class, which I might one day, instead of calling it communication campaigns, I am going to call it social marketing. Um, this is the book that we're going to be using. It is all about social marketing. Yours will not have <laughs> as much love as my book has probably. Um, uh, you'll need to get the fifth edition um, and this is um, written by some um, really foremost authorities um, in the area of social marketing. What is social marketing? Well, you're going to get to that in your first chapter, but I'll give you a little preview. Um, it, it's basically the idea that in the same way that we can, we can market products, you know, you can market um, Kleenex or you can market um, even, <laughs> I'm like wearing, of course, a branding logo. You can market a university. Um, you can also market ideas and behaviors, right? So there's a systematic way to do that. Um, so I hope you already understand um, how that can tie into campaigns. It's just the idea that what campaigns are trying to do very often um, is the same thing that like um, a marketing or advertising campaign is trying to do. Um, but this class has a particular interest in um, trying to influence people's behaviors, right? Trying to persuade them to change a behavior, to quit a behavior, to adopt a behavior. Um, so that's kind of where we're going with this, but what you'll see is that um, a lot of the same principles, most of them, I mean that's kind of the model, most of the same principles you would apply um, to trying to market a product uh, can be applied to trying to market um, some sort of behavior or whatever. So anyway, um, again, more on that uh, for the first lecture summary, but um, please do pick up this book. Um, if you don't want the hard copy, I'm pretty sure it comes online, and I'm also pretty sure you can rent it. So if you don't think you're going to uh, <laughs> want to have this as, you know, on your shelf after this semester, I understand, um, you know, try to do whatever works for you. Um, occasionally, there might be some readings that aren't in the book, just some supplementary stuff. If there are, you won't have to purchase any of that. I'm going to post it on eCampus and you should be able to find it in a, the course content folder. There'll be a, a folder just for readings. Um, uh, also, um, occasionally um, I'm going to, we're going to have class discussions. I, I think about like uh, maybe three possibly four times a semester, uh, you're going to need to access a discussion board. If you've taken an online class before, this is um, probably uh, fairly familiar to you, but I just wanted you to realize that pretty much everything that's going to be going on in this class, any materials that you need outside of the book, everything is going to be on eCampus for you. Um, so I always say on that note, you know, um, it is very wise to check eCampus daily. That's going to be my primary point of contact with you. If there's like some crazy like announcement, an emergency, oh my, I don't know, like I lost, I won't have internet access for a week or something weird like that. That won't ever happen. But um, um, I will probably blast you with an email. I do that occasionally, but I don't like to make a habit out of it. I feel like it loses its... Um, kind of like the boy who cried wolf, it loses its potency if I email people all the time. So most of the time, if I have little announcements here and there, what I'm going to do is post those on eCampus too. Um, aside from, you'll get this video probably in, a, um, in an email and, you know, again, when there are big announcements, I'll email you. But um, 
again, just to reiterate, that's why I recommend that you go and actively check eCampus at least once a day just to make sure um, you're not going to miss anything. Um, and again, even if I you check it right, you know, I, I post something right after you check it, you'll get it the next day. Um, most of you, I think, have probably already taken an online course um, in our program, and I heard great things about how those classes went. So um, I'm, I'm guessing you're kind of getting the hang of this. Um, by now, you know that um, for better or worse, right, these online classes tend to require a lot of self-motivation. Um, you know, in my in-person classes, uh, and, you know, <laughs> some of my students really need this, um, I'm able to push a little bit more because it's like, oh, we're literally seeing each other face and face to face um, a couple times a week and I can prod and I can remind and I can badger and <laughs> doesn't my job sound appealing? Uh, but the point is, is I can, I can kind of like um, be more engaged with students to um, make sure that they're on top of things and remind them to turn things in and, and talk to them about different assignments. And we just don't have that luxury. Um, the great news about that, of course, is that you can have a life outside of school. Um, and there's no um, time that you ha we have to, we're ever going to have to like meet. Like, oh, everybody has to be on your computer at, you know, three o'clock on Tuesday. Like, there won't be any of that. So the plus side is, is that hopefully um, this format will be flexible enough where you can kind of um, do the work for this course on your own time at your own convenience. The downside, though, as I'm sort of leading up to, is that uh, it's all on you. Like there's a heavy burden um, for you to just kind of stay on top of things. And particularly for um, students who are doing so many other things, I know that can be a big challenge. And so again, I'll try to post those YouTube announcements, YouTube, um, eCampus announcements as much, much as possible to help you. Um, but uh, what I would recommend doing at the very beginning of the semester is maybe even keeping a calendar because I really do sincerely believe that um, one of the greatest challenges of these courses, kind of half the battle is just remembering to do the work and keeping up with it, right? Not falling behind. Um, and as I'll talk about it in a minute, that's really important in this class because um, some of the exercises we do are cumulative. So if you kind of like um, do, you know, a half-ass job with one assignment, then that's gonna affect your next assignment and so forth. So. Um, Okay, if you need to contact me, eCampus is a great way to do it, but really, um, eCampus, I mean, um, email is the best way. Um, I don't always check it, but I've got my iPhone here. It's got Pokemon Go on it right now. Um, but I got my iPhone right here, and it does get email, so um, that doesn't mean I'm always going to get, <laughs> I don't always want to be tethered to my email, but um, I, I want you to know that I, I'm very uh, easily accessed through email. So I think that should be the first go-to. But a lot of times, and I found this very helpful the last time I, I taught class, um, I really recommend you reaching out to me to set up a, a, a phone time or even like a Skype chat or something like that. So send me an email and we can actually set up an appointment to have a more in-depth conversation that um, isn't you know by a slower medium like email. Um, this will be become this will become particularly important for those of you who um, are maybe not understanding some of the feedback I'm giving you, or are maybe um, struggling with some of your ideas and, and want to bounce some things off of me. I really really encourage you to do that. Um, I won't press press anybody to do that. You're not forced to you know come to phone office hours or anything like that. But I really want you to understand that it's an option. And the only thing you need to do to get in touch with me. Um, to set up something if you don't think email is going to be enough, um, which is, again, very reasonable, um, especially in an online course, just drop me an email and say, hey, can we set up a time? And um, my, my schedule, I work a lot, but it's very flexible. So it's one of these things that um, I have a lot of work to do, but it's, I get to decide when I do it. So I can usually work around your schedule, really. Um, okay. Um, Contacting you, I already kind of mentioned this. Again, eCampus, be checking it once a day. That'll be my first point of contact. If uh, um, otherwise, um, I'll send you a direct email. Um, okay, so what does this class look like in terms of assignments? Well, this is a social marketing campaign class, and your job for the entire semester is going to be to set up a proposal for a social marketing campaign. It can be on pretty much any topic you want. What we're gonna be working on for the first couple weeks is you picking your topic and sort of refining it in a way that where you have clearly defined objectives about what you wanna campaign for, about what you wanna persuade people to do. Um, again, we're not selling products, we're selling behaviors. Um, I had people um, doing everything um, in last semester from trying to um, 
figure out how to get people to adopt pets to um, uh, oh trying to um, get more people to practice uh, more people who play football to practice um, helmet safety techniques to make to prevent them from getting concussions um, I've seen uh, no text, uh, texting and driving campaigns, not to get people to text and drive, but the opposite. Um, so all of those things, a lot of health stuff. Um, there were all, there's always a handful of people who want to do something related to uh, weight reduction and obesity, those types of things, which honestly, what's interesting about that topic is even though a lot of people are interested in improving people's health by um, helping them lose weight, um, there's so many different ways you can approach that. So all of the social marketing campaigns looked really different. Anyway, you all have your own topic. Um, we're going to be, you know, again, tackling that at the first uh, part of the semester um, and refining that. And then the idea is, is that throughout the semester, we're going to be putting in place step by step each little bit of your campaign proposal that you're supposed to turn in at the end of the semester. The goal, it doesn't always work out like this. This is kind of where the self-motivation comes in. The goal is for each week you do a little piece that you can fit into your proposal so that you can be writing your proposal as you go. Again, a lot of people didn't do that and the proposal did take a long time to write at the end, but everybody should have had at least the bare components there so that you've done a little, we'll do like a worksheet each week. Sometime it'll be a discussion activity. That activity is something that should feed directly into a section of your campaign proposal, okay? So that's why I kind of mentioned, I was like, these assignments are very, can be somewhat cumulative because let's say that you're having a hard time refining your topic, right? Uh, well, that's gonna affect the next worksheet that you do. Um, so what's going to be really crucial about this is that as we go through each of the steps and you're going to, ha again, have worksheets each week, um, and you can see on the syllabus here, you're going to have um, assignments and discussions worth 84 points of your grade. There's going to be 12 of them, each worth 7 points. Those are That's what we're talking about here. Um, these worksheets, it's the type of thing where you'll do this worksheet, I hand you back feedback, and I'm going to expect to see that feedback when you do step two or step three or step four integrated in there. Not literally like you respond to my feedback, but you're going to have to take the, the, um, the grade, the graded um, worksheet that I gave you the week before, um, read it, and then work on your next worksheet, taking those things um, into consideration. Okay. Um, so that's really the structure of the course. I mean, um, and you'll see there's going to be a really solid routine. What I like to do is, um, you, all of your assignments are going to be due at 11.59 p.m. Hopefully this is kind of how other classes um, have gone. 11.59 p.m. on Sunday nights, you'll need to submit your worksheet, okay? Your weekly worksheet or assignment. Sometimes it'll be a quiz, whatever. Um, if there's some, if it's a type of thing where I give you feedback, I'm going to try as best as possible to spend my Monday doing the grading. So hopefully by Tuesday, and if not, I'll let you know, but hopefully by Tuesday you'll have feedback so then you can work on the worksheet for the next week. And then the next week, so you turn in that worksheet the next Sunday at 11.59 p.m. I grade these things on Monday, you have them back, so then the next Tuesday, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, so that's really um, how I hope and I anticipate um, things will go, and it worked out great last time. And again, if, if, if something happens with our timetable and we need to adjust or whatever, um, I will let you know about that. Um, so you can see here you've got the, the, the um, kind of, uh, I don't know how weathermen do it. Like, look at the mirror, okay. Is it right? So you've got the assignments and discussions, and each of those are trying to, you can see, they're weighted almost equally. All of these things should build up so that you can take the little exercises that we do and then start writing a much more formal marketing campaign proposal. Um, if you're smart, if you're really with it, and if you're feeling comfortable with the material, there's no reason why after you get feedback on an assignment, if, if you're pretty comfortable with everything, you can't start writing the certain sections of your social marketing campaign proposal, this final project that's due at the end, okay? And if you want, you can go on the eCampus right now and you can actually even see the outline for that proposal. Um, and I did that to hopefully make it a little easier to plug in 
the information from your assignments into, um, again, slightly different because you'll be more formal when you write up a proposal than in a worksheet, but you, you'll have all of the stuff you need to just plug it into the outline there um, and flesh out a proposal. Um, at the end, sort of the last week, I'm hoping this will be very relaxed. It was last time. Um, you'll turn in your proposal sometime around Thanksgiving. You can, you know, um, I have a schedule on the back of the syllabus here with all of the dates and everything. Um, and then the next um, step that you're going to need to do, you're going to need to do a little video just like I'm doing right here, like same concept, um, only much shorter. Uh, you're going to do put together a little video and just do a campaign show and tell. You're not going to go into the nitty gritty. It's just an opportunity for your classmates to get a sense of what you've done. And since we don't meet in person, I thought um, the video is a really good forum for you to um, talk to each other, you know, uh, and, and share your ideas and you can use visuals and show them campaign materials that you created and, and all sorts of things like that. Um, so that's that last little component. And I kind of skipped over already. So those we've got three components already of your grade. You've got the weekly assignments, the campaign proposal itself, which again is supposed to be the culmination of all those assignments, a little video show and tell at the end of the semester. Um, but you need to now, this week, um, go ahead and do a syllabus and eCampus quiz. Uh, that is just to help you familiarize yourself with the material I'm talking about right now, but um, also just get a little um, comfortable to how I've organized things on eCampus, okay? It'll ask you about deadlines and everything, so just when you open that up, that's on eCampus. You should find it in the same folder with your syllabus and everything. Um, you can take this quiz. You need to do it by the end of next week, second week of school, and um, this is going to be um, an all or nothing exercise, which means that I'm going, you can take the quiz as many times as you want, but the whole point is I want to make sure you got all the information. So I want, I want you to get it right. All right. Um, so go ahead and do that as soon as you can have the syllabus with you. Um, I think that would make it a lot easier. Um, okay. Um, that's a rundown of all the different assignments. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of skip over a lot of these policies, not all of them. Um, I will say this, just in general. Um, first of all, as you know, like all of these online classes, we're, we're going to be really dependent on eCampus. And I'm going to be really honest with you, I hate eCampus. I mean, it, it, it's good for some things, but I, I do actually really recognize how frustrating it can be. And, and um, it, it, it's often a frustration for me as well, you should know. Um, Having said that, I'm sadly, even though I study the media, I'm sadly not great about tech support myself. Um, I can try, and actually I had some successes where people, if they had trouble with something going weird on eCampus, they would send me a screen grab and I'd be like, oh, I think I know what's going on. Like, I had probably like a 75% success rate with, you know, us trying to figure things out, and you're welcome to do that. But I have on here um, the information for... Um, the tech support people at WVU who are, who, who are pretty good. Um, but I'll just add, you know, this is <laughs> because things do come up and you might need to call those guys um, or gals. I like to say guys a lot, but in the tech thing, I just feel like we should say gals because they can do tech too. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like uh, this is a good reason why, you know, don't wait until the last minute to turn in things as much as possible just to give yourself a little bit of leeway, okay? Um, I do want to also point out that um, when you turn in stuff on eCampus, a lot of it is going to be through a system called Turnitin. Um, and this might take a little bit of experimentation. Once you get it down, you'll get it down great. But Turnitin, um, it's actually a site that's designed um, to, to check for plagiarism. And I will check for plagiarism. Um, it's not going to be relevant to a lot of assignments, but of course, academic dishonesty, please don't cheat and use somebody else's words without um, proper attribution. Don't cut, cut and paste other people's research and post it into your assignment. Okay, all that. But the truth is, is I'm not using, um, I didn't start using Turnitin, this little, it's kind of like a portal system that's on eCampus. Um, to catch plagiarism, that wasn't my goal. I, it just makes it really easy for us to exchange things. Um, you don't have to email things and from me and wait for a confirmation because the idea is, is turn it in is on eCampus and there's going to be a turn it in portal for each assignment. You're going to upload your assignment into that portal. And then I just go in and I can just 
type notes onto your assignment just like that and then it's already there and your grades there and your grade goes in the grade book so that's why I use it I just find it to be a handy tool um, when I when I'm trying to do things online um, but again there's some it can be a little bit quirky uh, just because it, it's not as simple as just emailing something but it's the same concept where essentially you're going to let's say go to a, a worksheet one okay you'll get worksheet one it's gonna be a word document you'll fill out worksheet one when you're done you're gonna have to save worksheet one on your computer and then you're gonna upload that document into the turn it in spot for worksheet one and you'll see the way I have things um, you know put together on eCampus I've got like little folders for each week um, to help you just kind of like go week by week and, and see what's going on and uh, you'll just have to go back to that folder the same place that you got the worksheet to upload it and turn it into me again um, just explore it a little bit it's not difficult at all but I realized last semester I'm gonna sneeze I think <laughs> okay <laughs> um, um, I realized last semester that um, I was maybe one of the few uh, instructors in the program who, were, who, who, who was using um, who was using Turnitin. So I just wanted to ease your mind and assure you um, it is different, but it's really not that difficult. I just um, wanted to alert you to it. Um, and like I said, um, just to reiterate, the the flow of this is supposed to be you turn in your stuff on Monday, and I will go in sometime on Monday and grade it for you and try to get it back to you no later than Tuesday um, to give you um, a good few days to, to start working on your next assignment. Um, the other stuff is, uh, you know, just kind of stuff we put on our syllabus, important, but um, nothing I feel like I need to um, go into too much detail about. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, the back of your syllabus has our schedule here. Um, and you can see we pretty much go through the book in order. Um, there are some weeks um, that are heavier than others in terms of reading load, and that's usually just because there are some readings that just, some chapters that just hang together a little bit more. So sometimes you have really light loads and sometimes you have really heavy loads. But if you look here, you can kind of prepare for it um, and give yourself a little bit of time uh, for, for the weeks that are going to be heavier compared to the ones that are lighter. And I do highly recommend, again, you start putting deadlines in a calendar, uh, something that'll just like remind you, because I know life gets in the way and anything you can do to sort of just like, you know, prod yourself to, to, to work on these things. Um, the only other thing you're going to have to do during the week, actually, and I don't know where I put this in the syllabus, um, this, <laughs> this brief video, so like me, um, I, 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 Every week I kind of, I try to do a summary lecture and it's just like this. I don't have fancy PowerPoints or anything like that. Um, because honestly, you, you know, this isn't a PowerPoint class. You're not going to have exams in this class where you need to memorize terms or anything like that. Um, it is just going to be me talking and just trying to um, pick out what I think are the most important take home things from the chapter. So I'm not going to cover everything in the chapter, but it's a very good way for me to go over the things that I think you should know. Um, I will um, often give you other, um, oh, this makes me feel so powerful. It's like, ah. Oh. Um, I will often give you other um, examples or discuss some of the examples in the book or, or any sort of elaboration that I want to do. The idea is, is, is to just help you focus and to reiterate important messages um, from the book that I think will be helpful when you're doing your projects. Now, um, <laughs> full disclosure, not exactly a secret, uh, I did all of the videos, except I'm going to be changing up some, but all of the videos that you're going to be watching all of the summary lectures um, I did last semester. It hasn't been a year yet or anything, but um, they're not unique to your class. I tried to make them as general as possible um, so they wouldn't necessarily be directed at your specific projects. They're just very broad um, general lectures that I made for any student who's using this book um, to hopefully help them. So you'll even see, um, I should be more embarrassed of this, um, like this is a new office space, but I think like at the beginning of last semester I was in transition, so I was in this horrible, like awful, like cave of an office. Um, and like somewhere, you know, in the middle of the semester, like I, I changed offices and it was a big deal. It still is a big deal office. Um, so what will happen is, is you'll see that like, oh, this office right now 
the next time you watch like one of my lecture videos, I'm going to be in a different office and then you're going to see the transition into this office. And so spoiler alert, <laughs> this is a new office. Um, anyway, I think that covers the highlights. Uh, what I was making fun of myself for is that um, whenever I say brief, uh, sadly, uh, I'm not the best at brevity, but the good news is, is that's because I, I try to be as detailed as possible. I always figure the more information I give people, um, the, the, the more flexibility they have to decide what they want to do with it. So my summary lectures are usually about this this length. Um, not ideal. I mean, I think 10 minutes would be great, but I can't usually fit it in under 20 minutes. So I'll just warn you about that. Um, and if you guys don't watch them, that's your own prerogative. But again, um, based on the feedback I got from other students, um, they, they said that they, it was very helpful as they were trying to figure out what to do in their worksheets. So um, if you can tolerate seeing my mug, or even if you can't, you could just listen to the audio and I think it would be fine. Um, I think it would be really helpful. So that's the only other thing I wanted to mention. And um, I guess that's it. Um, please go ahead, finish your eCampus quiz and you're not getting graded on this, but I would really appreciate it if um, I could get a little introduction maybe in the discussion board just to know who you are. Um, it's also helpful if you can put a picture of yourself. They're like thumbnails, another thing I hate about eCampus. But every little sort of like cue I have of you will just help me get to know you, uh, which is something I'm really looking forward to. Um, so um, thank you very, very much for your patience and uh, thanks for taking the class. I'm looking forward to this semester. Have a great afternoon for me, evening, whenever you're watching this. Bye.